let's say you're a photographer, but you want to unleash your secret inner painter. You want to go all Bob Ross on a photograph. How do you do it? I'm going to show you with this example right now. This is a fall photograph, obviously. It's a cool shot. I really like this curved tree, but if we wanted to get artistic and play with it a little bit and do some, uh, you know, painting in Photoshop, we can turn it into something like this, kind of give it a whimsical fairy tale type look. So how do we go from this to this? Uh, pretty, pretty quick and easy. So let's take a look. We have our photo selected and we're just gonna right click it and then we're gonna edit in Photoshop and let Photoshop open up that photo for us. Okay, with that photo open in Photoshop, we are going to click this little padlock to unlock that layer. And then we're going to right click on our layer and duplicate layer. And you can get fancy and name your layers if you want so you don't get confused. We're only gonna have two of them, so I'm not gonna bother, but you can do that if you'd like. This is one way to do it. This is my way to do it. There are many ways to do it, and you'll see other tutorials that have different ways, but I think this is a pretty quick and easy way to do it. So I'm going to deselect this copied layer, and then I'm going to select our original layer. This is where we go into the filter menu, and we go down to blur, and then we pick motion blur. You can see there's all sorts of different blur options you can do, and you can play with those, and I can do future videos on each one of these, but for now, we're gonna go with motion blur, and watch what that does. So you can see that it takes that photo and just adds a vertical blur to it. Now we control that. Sometimes it might default to like a zero degree angle, and then you see in this little box here, so that's if we are if blurring something on a horizon that's horizontal, we would go with that. And we can either rotate our little line in here, or we can just type in the number that we want. So in this case, we want a 90 degree vertical angle. Distance in pixels is the amount of blur. So you can go all the way down to 10, which is basically nothing, just a very, very slight, all the way up to 2000, which is super intense and abstract, somewhere in between. Whatever looks best to you. Like in my case, probably, God, I don't know. I think that the, the original was around 600, but that might look cool there, somewhere around 750 or 813, <laughs> whatever. It doesn't really matter. Um, somewhere, somewhere around there, I think, looks pretty darn cool. So click OK, and now we have that blur applied to layer zero. I want to highlight this tree, like unblur this tree. So how do we do that? I'm gonna take this layer zero and move it up on top. And then I'm going to turn on the copy that we made. And now what I wanna do is brush over this tree to remove the blur on the top layer to reveal the layer underneath. There's a couple of ways you can do that. You could use the eraser tool like this and um, you can see um, it, this one is at 45 pixels, and that's obviously very small. So we just either increase that by clicking this and using our slider here, or once we have it selected, we can use our brackets to open it or close it, depending on what works. So you can either use your eraser and just kind of erase stuff out. That's one way to do it. I'm gonna control Z to undo that. The other option is to use a layer mask and your colors, your white reveals, black conceals. And so to do that, say we would add a layer mask, which is down here. And so we would just click that, which adds a mask to that layer. And we wanna remove the blur of layer one. So we have our black selected. Actually, we need that to be white white reveals, and then simply brush along this tree, and then it'll reveal what is underneath. And you can be as precise or non-precise as you like. Even if you make a mistake, we can go in and fix that. So I'll show you how that, how that works. But we just channel our inner Bob Ross here and paint this happy little tree right back into our scene which creates a really cool artistic effect. So here's, I'm just gonna do that. I'm 
Okay, we've got our tree painted back in there, but you can see it also removed some of the edges, which looks pretty terrible. So what we would do is just switch back to our black brush and then do the same thing and just conceal that area, which will bring the blur back. And I'm not too concerned about those edges. Like if those edges get a little bit soft, I think that adds to the, the whole whimsical feel of this image. So just paint right back over there. And you can take as much time and do as much detail as you want on this. This is where it really gets creative and fun. And just paint that blur back in. We can go around that here. We could make sure that we zoom in and then reselect our brush tool and then make it smaller and just continue to paint. Now we have this super unique image that's all blurred out in the background with that abstract, colorful background and this sharp tree in the foreground, which is a pretty cool look. You can play with this with any type of photograph. This is the basic knowledge that you need to create something like that. And you can go as far as you want with it. If you wanted to pull some more trees into focus from the background, you can certainly do that and see how that would look. And when you're happy with it and you're done, um, you can select both, so um, hold shift and select the unselected layer so both are selected. And then right click and flatten. And then that'll just merge that together so it's one image. And then just close it in Photoshop. It's going to ask you if you want to save. Definitely click yes, hit save. And then it's going to reopen that in Lightroom and then we can continue to edit it there if we'd like. But you can see we started with this image brought it into Photoshop, did some motion blur and revealing and concealing, and ended up with an image that looks like this. I hope you had some fun. I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions on what I did, leave a comment. I'll get back to you and we can talk through it together. But have fun. Create art. Let your, let your artist self flow and enjoy what you create. Thank you for being here. Please subscribe if you haven't. More tutorials are on the way. Appreciate you. Thank you.